Hello. For this project, you're going to be doing portraits. They're going to be self-portraits. And you're going to be looking carefully at proportion, so getting everything the right shape and the right size, and using your drawing skills, in particular shading, to make everything look three-dimensional. So to help us, we're going to be looking at an American artist called Chuck Close. Chuck Close is known as a photorealistic artist. And what that means is that he draws and paints so accurately that it looks like a photograph. Now, the picture on the screen in front of you isn't a drawing, that is a photograph. But have a look at these, because this is a drawing that he made in 1970. It's called Keith, which is the name of the man who modelled for him. And not only is it photorealistic, it's an absolutely enormous drawing. You can see there that it's the size of the wall in his studio. So he's taken years of practice to be able to draw photorealistically so that his pictures can trick the eye. Here are two more examples of photorealistic drawings that he did in the 1960s and 1970s. I know it's quite amazing, but he has some tricks up his sleeve in order to get um, this really, really realistic effect. And he uses a technique that we're going to use for our drawings in this project. And what he does there is he uses a grid. The picture on the right isn't terribly clear because it's a very, very, very old photograph um, from 1970, but it actually shows the grid that he used in order to make the portrait on the left. So what he would do is he would draw a one centimeter grid all over his photograph, and then he would scale it up by drawing a bigger grid on his canvas or on his paper, and then he'd draw box by box, which means he, would, he was only ever concerning himself with what was in each individual box. He never tried to draw the whole face at once. He would look at each square on his picture and he would just draw what he could see inside that square. So those black and white pictures were drawn during the 1960s and 1970s. He did start experimenting with colour a little bit later. So here you can see from the 70s and 80s some, um, well, the one on the left is still a photorealistic picture. And then as he got into the 1980s, he continued to use the grid technique that he'd been using to get everything in proportion. But he started to play more with the grid and play more with the... Um, shapes and patterns that he put into the grid. In 1988, a tragedy stuck, struck and Chuck Close um, was confined to a wheelchair, but he continued using his gridding technique and he continued to work to make some really, really big paintings. You can see some photographs of him here, here in his studio. The one on the left was taken in 1990 and you can see how he's still working big. You can see how he's adapted his space so he's got hooks on the wall so that he can turn his portrait around so that he can reach it. And one taken in the early 2000s is the picture on the right where you can see really, really carefully how he's having fun with those squares and thinking about the colours that he can see in each square on his picture that he's looking at for reference, uh, but he's making everything a lot more abstract.